and welcome back to Virtual Learning with Miss M. All life on Earth depends on energy from the sun. It is this energy that allows plants to produce glucose, but it is also this energy in the form of ultraviolet photons that can damage the DNA in your cells and cause skin cancer. Did you know that skin cancer is the most common type of cancer in the United States? It is estimated that there are more than 1 million new cases of skin cancer in the United States each year. The incidence of skin cancer has been on the rise for the last few decades, even in young adults. Long-term exposure to ultraviolet rays increases the risk for developing skin cancer. In fact, a woman or man who uses a tanning bed more than once a month is 55% more likely to develop melanoma, the deadliest form of skin cancer. The good news is that skin cancer can, can be prevented and is highly treatable when caught early. Before we learn how UV rays damages the skin, we need to learn the structure and function of the skin. In today's lesson, we're going to learn the different layers of the skin and how the different layers help protect you from these harmful UV rays. The skin is actually the largest organ we have on our body. And the skin has multiple functions. These functions include protecting the body from trauma. Number two, regulating the body temperature. Number three, maintaining water and electrolyte balance. Number four, sensing painful and pleasant stimuli. And lastly, participating in the synthesis of vitamin D. I think we need to shoot this over to Baker Miss M, who can visually show you the different layers of the skin. Hello, and welcome to Baking with Miss M. Today, we're gonna work together to build an edible dessert that mimics the layers of the skin. The skin has three layers. I want to use my Dutch Brothers clear cup so you can see the different layers. The first layer, starting from the bottom, making our way up, is what we call the hypodermis, also known as the subcutaneous layer. So let's build this hypodermis. The hypodermis is basically fat. Um, this fat in the skin helps insulate the body from heat and provides a protective padding and serves as an extra energy storage area. To represent the hypodermis, we are going to be using marshmallows. Since marshmallows are spongy, they can provide the protective padding and insulation that we need. So I'm going to put hypodermis. Following the dermis is a I meant to say on top of the hypodermis is the dermis. A thick layer of fibrous and elastic tissue, mostly made of collagen and small but important component of elastin. This gives the skin its flexibility and strength. The dermis contains nerve endings, sweat glands, oil glands, hair follicles, and blood vessels. To represent the dermis, I will use Jello. Since Jello is Jello, it can hold various objects such as hair follicles. And you don't have a spoon near me, so I'm just gonna dump it. <laughs> there is your dermis. To represent a hair follicle, I am going to use a spaghetti stick and stick it right into the dermis. There's your dermis. The last layer that makes up the skin, the top layer of the skin that we literally see, is what we call the epidermis. The epidermis is a relatively thin, tough outer layer of the skin. To represent the epidermis, we will use graham crackers. There's your epidermis! Within the epidermis, we can find three different kinds of cells. We have keratinocytes, melanocytes, and Langerhans. Keratinocytes make keratin, which adhere cells together um, in order to form a, the protective layer on the outside of the skin. To represent the keratinocytes, we are going to using cashews. And I'm going to put that, you can see it, in the epidermis. Keratinocytes. Melanocytes produce melanin. 
D cells are responsible for, to, for producing the pigment of your skin. To represent the melanocytes, I will be using raisins. And I will put that in the epidermis. Melanocytes. The last kind of cells we can find in the epidermis are what we call the longer Han cells. Longer Han cells produce longer, longer Han cells, which aid the immune system in recognizing potentially dangerous microorganisms and chemicals. To represent the longer Han cells, I will be using gummy worms. I also have a picture here that shows that longer Han cells look like octopus. And so this is the closest thing I could find that I have at home. So I'm going to put the longer Han cells in the epidermis. Longer Han cells. Look at the skin model we made together. We have the hypodermis, the marshmallows, also known as the subcutaneous layer. We have the dermis layer represented by the jello. Remember, the dermis holds the blood vessels, the sweat glands, and the hair follicles, which is represented by the spaghetti stick. And lastly, we have the epidermis, which is represented by the graham crackers in our cup. Remember, the epidermis contains sweet three cells. We have the longer Han cells, represented by the gummy worms. We have the melanocytes, which is represent represented by the raisins. And lastly, we have the keratinocytes, which is represented by the cashews right on top. I dare you! to create your own edible model of the skin using ingredients you have at home. And then you can eat it. Mmm. Wow, welcome back from Baking with Miss M. Isn't she funny? I think we need to see more of her in the future. I hope you enjoyed your lesson on the skin. Remember, the skin is the largest organ on your body, so make sure you are protecting it. And the skin is designed to have multiple layers to help protect the body. So if the skin protects you, protect your skin. Until next time, medical interventions, bye.